This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. What? You got a I am on a six year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking. So join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week we are heading to exotic Turkey, where Sea Wind's new factory dedicated to this week's guest yacht is located. We are talking about the brand new Sea Wind 1170. Today we will 1. Review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels. 2. Do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say? 3. Naval gaze at an innovation and or an adjustment that just may, might make life aboard a little easier. 4. Have a look at the used market for 3 to 5 year old comparables. And 5. Give it a Dave score and compare the results with all our previously reviewed yachts. As always, all this fun will be sandwiched between a pairing of wine and a work of art from the same region as the guest yacht in an effort to capture the culture and people who gave birth to these wonderful vessels. Waves, wine, art and ideas. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes, so let's get going. From high above Vancouver, we head west across the Pacific to the yards of Xiamen Hansheng Yacht Building Company in Fujian, China, where last week's yacht, the Passport 545, is manufactured. From here, we continue west to Turkey and the brand new yards of Sea Wind Catamarans and the home of this week's guest yacht, the Sea Wind 1170. Continuing still further west to neighboring Greece, we arrive at the vineyards of Butari for our wine pairing this week, Butari Nausa 2013. The Butari family has been crafting wines from Greek varietals since 1879, when Yanis Butari first started producing red wines in the small northern village of Nosa. Since that first vintage, the family has become a pioneer of Greek wines, from exporting the first bottled red wine from Greece to reviving lost varietals. Butari now crafts wine from six different regions using varietals that are grown nowhere else in the world. In a constant quest for improvement, Batari maintains demonstration vineyards around Greece where local farmers are invited to learn new methods and techniques for improving their grapes. The results have been astounding. Batari has been named an International Winery of the Year by Wine and Spirits 19 times. Only five wineries in the world have received the award more times. Achievements such as developing the modern style of Santorini to reviving lost varietals have garnered lavish praise from the wine press and spawned a, a generation of high quality Greek wines made by vintners who cut their teeth under the tutelage of the Butari family. Hmm, you'll enjoy that. Let's go have a look at that boat. Cheers. Having a look at the outside of this uh, boat, if it looks familiar, it should. It looks like a, just a smaller 1370 of uh, Ruby Rose fame. Uh, great lines, great uh, um, profile, you know, a very fine bow, a reverse bow, really looks good. Uh, that cabin top and uh, the arch in the back that ties it all in. Uh, it, it really is a, a very handsome boat. Uh, the, it's got a good sized um, front nets, they're not excessive, but uh, you can see the length of the, uh, the hulls there promising some good performance. Um, but just overall, you know, for the dimensions and the fact that it's a smaller 1370, they've done an awfully good job uh, from an aesthetic standpoint. Okay, looking at our comparables this week, we are looking at the Sea Wind 1170, the Bally Cat Smart, the Sea Wind 1190, and the Bally Cat Space. We just thought we'd mix it up for you there a little bit. Looking at the profiles, really the only one that's 
quite attractive is the Sea Wind 1170. Uh, the two ballys, you know, always look a bit guppyish, especially in these uh, shorter ranges, uh, you know, simply because of the vast amount of space that they offer in the interior. The Sea Wind 1190 is dated in its profile. Um, I'm sure they'll be looking at that one next. Heading down onto the top here, I didn't have. Um, uh, top-down views of the 1190 or the 1170, so I sort of blacked out their uh, layouts here. But uh, suffice to say, there, there's nothing going on the top. These are more performance-oriented performance cats, low booms, uh, solar on the roof, and nothing else. Uh, the Bally Cat Smart uh, is very unique in that it's a Bally with aft outboard helms. Really quite interesting. And of course, that typical Bally solid uh, foredeck, uh, which even in a cat of this size offers extensive space out front. You'll also note there are no hatches along the uh, side decks, so uh, you have very clear and open side decks there. Uh, and for once on a Bally, nothing going on on the uh, roof. When you look at the uh, Bally cat space, you do have uh, the uh, upper uh, deck there that has uh, for, for your uh, flybridge and um, your forward um, uh, deck as far as a solid four deck goes. And of course, uh, no hatches along the side decks. Heading down into the saloon, uh, you will see here, of course, the Bally's have this expansive saloon because of that aft door and the fact they don't have an aft cockpit. Now, arguably, they don't need one because they have forward cockpits. Now, the, the Cat Smart, of course, uh, and the Cat Space, neither of them have the typical uh, Bally forward door onto that wonderful uh, forward deck. Uh, but nevertheless, they have expansive space inside because they've sort of absorbed that aft cockpit uh, into the interior with the uh, garage door. Now, having said that, they both have an aft settee and a certain amount of, of outdoor space on the aft. Uh, the Sea Wind 1170, a very traditional layout, very much again like a shrunk down 1370. Uh, you've got, you know, decent cockpit, a very modest uh, um, saloon, very modest actually, especially, you know, when you, when you look at the other three in this, even the 1170 has a much larger saloon. Uh, but it does have a three-sided um, bed access, which we'll talk about in a sec. So heading down then into the accommodations on all four here, you can see uh, the uh, Sea Wind, uh, the 1170, uh, the Sea Wind 1190, and the Bally Cat Space all do have at least one full three sided walk around berth. Now, with the Cat Space, it's not in the owner's hull. You do have a fore aft berth uh, on the owner's side, but it's quite a generous owner's hull, and there's decent room around that uh, aft berth. It, I, I wouldn't classify it as a butt scoot bed. Uh, the 1170 and the 1190 uh, both have that uh, balance esque uh, uh, thwart ship forward berth uh, with uh, three side access to it, uh, which is, you know, a really nice feature. It's a little high, but a really nice access feature. Uh, the Cat Smart, a very traditional layout. Uh, you definitely have butt scoot beds in the aft of both hulls, a, a, a forward. Um, port side a hull for guests or children and then a full owner's hull on the starboard side. Okay hopping into the numbers here across the top line uh, you can see it's the Bally Cat Smart that's no, most economical here at 340 uh, euros followed closely by the Cat Space at 397 followed closely by <laughs> the uh, 1190 at 412 and then a, a bit of a, an, another jump out is the Sea Wind 1170 at 468. Um, looking down into the numbers, length overall, uh, the longest is the uh, Bally Cat Space at 41 feet or 12.5 meters. The uh, beam, however, it's the uh, Bally Cat Smart at 38.6 feet or 11.78 meters. Uh, the um, 
the draft, uh, again, it's the Bally Cat Smart uh, with a low draft of 1.1 meters or 3.6 feet. Uh, very closely followed by the Bally Cat Space at 1.19 and then the Sea Wind at 1.2. Uh, and finally, the Sea Wind 1190 at 1.35. Looking at displacement, it is the Sea Wind 1190 that is the least at uh, 6.6 tons or 14,600 pounds. Uh, the next one there is the Bally Cat Smart at uh, 8.4. And then you've got the Bally Cat. Uh, sorry, the uh, Sea Wind 1170 at 9.2 and the Bally Cat Space at 9.4. Upwind sail area. Uh, interesting here, it's the Bally Cat Smart at 101 square meters. Uh, the closest one is going to be the Sea Wind 1190 at 93 square meters, followed by the Sea Wind 1170 at 84 and then the Bally Cat Space at 79. Heading down into capacities, uh, it's the Sea Wind with the most powerful engines at uh, 2 times 29. And then uh, again, fuel capacity at 520 liters and fresh water at 1,000 in the lead by a significant margin. As far as the other capacities, again, I'll ask you to poke your brokers and your manufacturers to start getting them to include interior square footage, exterior square footage, interior enclosed storage volume, and exterior locker volume. Uh, fridge capacities should be here as well as freezer. Uh, the, I found uh, three of those. And uh, in the lead is going to be the Sea Wind 1170 at 150 liters. Uh, the other two are about 130 liters, that being the 1190 and the Bally Cat Space. I couldn't find anything on the Bally Cat Smart. Looking at the more technical information here, uh, as far as hull construction goes, uh, it is a Sea Wind 1170 in the, the lead with uh, fiberglass and carbon reinforcement in key areas, vacuum infused, pure vinyl ester over PVC foam core. Um, the others are a, uh, 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 no, the Bally's are always a, a polyester and a vinyl ester mix with anti-osmotic uh, vinyl ester underwater protection. They definitely have a foam core. Then the 1190s vacuum infused polyester e-glass over PVC foam. Not much to choose from there. Looking at the indicators of performance, we got sail area to displacement. Uh, or an indicator of power, it's the Sea Wind 1190 out, in fr out front with 26.8, followed surprisingly by the Bally Catsmart at 24.9, then the Sea Wind 1170 at 19.5, and finally the Bally Cat Space predictably at 17.9. As far as displacement to hull length or an indicator of heaviness, this is low number winds. It is once again the Sea Wind 1190 at 128.7. Again, surprisingly, followed by the Bally Cat Smart at 143.6, the Sea Wind 1170 at 161.9, and the Bally Cat Space in last place at 176.4. And finally, for the KSP or the indicator of comparable uh, speed at uh, 10 knots of wind, uh, it is the Sea Wind 1190 showing 80% of wind speed. Followed again, surprisingly, by the Bally Cat Smart at 75%, uh, the Sea Wind 1170 at 65%, and finally the Cat Space at 62%. If you're enjoying the content, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button, then share the channel with a couple of friends and hit the like button. It's free and really helps the channel. You can also join our crew on Patreon, where you can enjoy ad free viewing as well as downloads of the Excel specifications and PowerPoint layout comparisons while helping the channel for a few dollars a month. You can find a link to the Naval Gazing at Camp David Patreon channel in the description below, where you can also click to receive our free ebook and information on some really cool virtual sailing training. And speaking of cool, my friends at catamaranshow.com have developed an amazing website and database of every catamaran available and scheduled to be launched that allows you to do a, select, a selectable in-depth comparison of three cats at a time. 
They also are working on an incredible virtual tour and on-the-fly configurator that provides the option of fully immersive virtual reality with the appropriate 3D goggles. This is an incredible resource for anyone considering a catamaran purchase. Have a look by clicking the, in the link in the description below. Okay, hopping on board, what would Sylvia say? Uh, well, at first glance, she'd really like this vessel. The exterior is extremely handsome, quite sleek. Uh, they've done a great job with the dimensions as far as the overall look and feel in a smaller version of the 1370. Uh, the uh, bows look absolutely outstanding and a little vicious there. Uh, they got a great longer on out there for the uh, for the Code Zero and the upwind sail. The uh, arch looks very nice. The uh, canopy, uh, the, the the bimini, uh, well done. Not as finished uh, on the underside as some might be, uh, but but that will be a theme that you'll see on this vessel as we go through. Uh, so overall, uh, you know, it it looks really good. Um, the uh, upholstery is nice and tight. Everything, uh, the, the the fittings, uh, the 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 even the great wheels look really good. Lots of room for solar up there. Nice low boom for easy access. Great handholds all the way along. I do like their touch of of uh, color in some of the arch areas and the roof line. Um, where they've uh, added some uh, tint to the actual uh, fiberglass. You've got nice non-skid surfaces up here, and uh, I believe you also have those uh, safari, yeah, there we are, the safari windows that open up, uh, so giving you great sea breeze in and through there. Uh, that, that, you know, that's a tremendous innovation that really Oyster made famous, and I don't know why it's not done on basically every catamaran and every monohull. Uh, it's a great feature that everybody points out when you're talking about Oyster, and certainly has been pointed out many times when talking about the Sea Wind uh, 1370. A uh, great um, room here on the uh, front trampolines, and you quickly saw that step there. I'm assuming they may have that same lovely molded-in factory available cushions that go in for seating there. We've seen uh, Nick and Teresa lounging on those many a time. I think they're just a wonderful uh, addition to the front area, creating a, a full cockpit without cluttering things up very much. Uh, there's your, um, uh, again, your solid glass um, uh, windows. You're, you're not dealing with a, a grazable uh, plastic. Look at those handholds. Really great handholds. I guess they were listening to Nick when he walked through. Um, and the, uh, the, the, the safety lines in the side are good. They're at a, a decent height as well. Uh, again, I wish every manufacturer would have an option of solid uh, lifelines or life rails, uh, as ML does and uh, Privilege does. Um, Again, uh, you know, nice access down along the, the side decks, um, that uh, uh, just fantastic access to your boom on top. You have those flexible walk-on solar panels, uh, are arguably, you know, a ventilated glass would be better. Uh, the underside of the uh, of the Bimini is fared nicely, uh, great hardware on the seats, they look extremely comfortable. And certainly a very secure space here uh, for the uh, captain. The window is not electric as it is on Nick and Teresa's. You actually have to remove it. Um, again, this helm position, I know it's been sold hard. I don't like it. Uh, I sat here. Um, I, I really have to stretch to get up and out and see my sails. It's not real comfortable. I know there's a a glass window above me, but I would prefer to be able to swing my helm out the side and have an easy look up and forward. Um, I, I really think they've gone too far on the sheltered helm here. Again, I, I don't quite know why all of a sudden, after centuries of, of aft helms on mono hulls, it's desperate that every catamaran uh, captain be completely sheltered, just wrapped in bubble wrap and plop behind the wheel. Anyways, enough of my crying. Uh, you know, your finishes are, are pretty good. I wouldn't say they were extraordinary. Uh, you saw some of the, the uh, mastic there was a little uneven. Uh, looking through here, this is my big, big bugbear. This there's just way too much plastic. I mean, way too much fared fiberglass. 
it is it is it is uh, creates a very uh, sterile. Uh, lower end feel to the entire interior, which shouldn't have that feel given the cabinetry that is available at Seawind. Uh, they need to figure out uh, that, yes, there is uh, adhesive uh, uh, veneers that you can put on all those flat surfaces of fiberglass and actually warm this thing up. I mean, look, look at the, you, you've, you've got fiddles along that shelf, but can't we drop in at least a layer of leather on there or something to break up the, the, the feeling of living inside a hospital room? Let's do a little navel gazing now. This week, we are looking at one of the most common and useful technologies on your yacht that, for some reason, has been permitted to be the most unnecessarily noisy and disruptive system, regardless of the sailing yacht size or cost. It's your water pump. In a recent review of the brand new, stunning $7 million plus Halberg Rassi 69, Toby Hodges made a surprising observation that had me sitting up and taking notice. That. The water pump running. How is this possible on a $1 million yacht, never mind a $7 million yacht? Especially when it is completely unnecessary and easy to resolve. Yet this oversight persists in both land and sea recreational vehicles, regardless of cost. For all you factory owners out there, here is how you fix it and set your brand apart. Number one. Pump technology selection. A four-chambered diaphragm pump is quieter than a two-chamber pump. Two, pump manufacturer selection. Specific manufacturers are markedly quieter than others at the same price. Here are two examples of different pumps with the same output specifications. Three, Connection materials. Pumps vibrate. That vibration will transmit through your vessel very efficiently if you connect the pump to your plumbing using rigid pipes. The more rigid the pipe connection, the louder and wider the pump noise will travel. So use a half meter length of the softest, most malleable hose that will support the pressure required to connect both sides of the pump to your plumbing. Plumbing insulation. Pipe and hose vibration. Vibrating hoses and pipes that are in direct contact with your hull will transmit noise throughout your hull. Use split foam pipe insulation on the hoses and the pipes that connect to your pump for a distance of one meter on either side. The foam insulates the vibration and reduces the noise at the source. Five, marine pressurized water accumulator tanks with a bladder. You can always smooth out the pump activity and reduce noisy pulsation using a simple plug-and-play marine pressurized water accumulator tank with a bladder. 6. Mounting. If you screw a vibrating pump directly to a mounting board or plate that is rigidly mounted to your hull or cabinetry, any vibration or noise will be transmitted very efficiently to the interior of your boat. Use rubber mounts with metal bolts bonded to a rubber center section to mount your pump and isolate the vibration from the hull or cabinetry. You can go one better by using this mounting system on a plywood base plate, which is epoxied to a rubber foam sandwich that is itself epoxied to the desired mounting position. The more vibration insulation, the quieter the outcome. And seven, not necessary, but a good idea, a soundproof enclosure. Last but not least, you can build a simple ventilated soundproof box to house the pump. The pump can be mounted in the box using the rubber mounts mentioned above and the box mounted to the hull or cabinet using the foam sandwich pads we spoke of previously. The box can be made like a cake cover so that the pump is easily access accessed for maintenance and inspection. Given that the entire cost of implementing all these simple noise reduction tactics is an incremental $20 to $30, including labor, and the result is about a 500% reduction in noise, how is it possible that we still get woken up in the middle of the night by a noisy water pump on our million dollar plus sailing yacht when somebody simply goes to the washroom and washes their hands? We have the technology to avoid this. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We 
have the technology. And don't get me started on the remedial noise reduction tactics used on diesel drives and generators. It's rather pathetic what we tolerate from our manufacturers. Okay, back on board. Looking through the... Um, the uh, head here and then uh, up into the saloon. As I said, you had a quick look at the ceiling there. And again, very, a lot of exposed fared plastic. There's a little padding to hide the, uh, the uh, uh, embedded lighting, but that's about it. The rest of it is the underside of that mold. And again, these shelves on either side, I mean, Really, all you need to do would be even an inlay of some stitched faux leather would look outstanding. The uh, the 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 uh, wood pieces at the side of this um, berth uh, are really nice. The seating around here, the cabinetry looks good. A good amount of storage, and of course, three axis. Uh, um, uh, to the to the bed, nice hanging closet in the four peak. All this is executed nice. It's just surrounded by so much exposed plastic. It just I, I, my my skin crawls looking at this. Uh, it, I don't know what they're thinking of. This is so easy to resolve. In fact, I think Nick resolved it to a certain degree in the 1370 with some simple vinyl uh, uh, wrap. That, that mimic the, the, um, the grain of the wood that they've already used. Heck, even HH uses vinyl as an option to uh, pure uh, uh, wood veneers on there, but either is okay and will warm this thing up and increase the perceived value like 300%. Look at what they have done. What they have done is beautiful. Rounded corners, nice veneers, but there is just way too much white here. Uh, that countertop. Now, other manufacturers have been guilty of it as well. Uh, Lagoon is one of the best. On their 50s, they have a little design that looks like marble in their countertops, their Corian. Really looks outstanding. And in fact, in the latest uh, Balance 442, the owner specced in, again, that same look. And it just broke up the interior beautifully, making it look outstanding. Here is, again, your uh, one of your berths here that we talked about. Uh, nice access up, but again, those steps are all molded in plastic. I mean, it just looks like you're living in a vacuum molded bottle. Uh, the bathroom is where you expect to see this, but even there, you could break it up a bit with some design in a Corian countertop and just, and maybe some Corian uh, 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 floor area in the shower, similar to what Lagoon has done in theirs. Just little touches or even a, a teak grid uh, like um, our friends at Naughty Tech or that beautiful teak grid we saw the other day in the, um, in the, the Passport uh, 545 in the shower. These things just add so much of a sense of quality and class and that's what's missing here. I'm sure this is all very functional, but holy mackerel. The other thing is this trifold door, that technology is so yesterday, last week, last century, get rid of it, uh, inconvenient, and um, there are better ways of accomplishing what you want to accomplish there. But, you know, overall, nice boat that needs just a few touches to really bring it up. Okay, what are we going to compare this to on the pre-owned market? Well, first up is a 2021 Sea Wind 1260, very close in length. Um, they are looking for half a million US. Our sail away price, of course, is based on base plus 50%, which takes us to 765,000 for the brand new uh, 1170. Um, you know, for a quarter of a million bucks Delta uh, on an almost new boat, what are we, uh, two years old here? Uh, I would take the, um, I would take the 1260. Next up, we're looking at a 2019 Naughty Tech. So we're looking at a, uh, a four-year-old boat. Um, Naughty Tech open. They're asking for 480 grand versus our 765. Uh, I'm sorry, no contest. I would take the Naughty Tech. It's, uh, it, it's a good performing boat. Uh, and the finish inside is warm and inviting. There's a lot of great features to that Naughty Tech. And I prefer the helm position on the Naughty Tech by a long shot. Last up is a 2023 Fountain Peugeot Isla 40, so basically a new boat, a year old. 
Uh, we're looking at 625,000 uh, versus the 765,000. Uh, I'd save my 140 grand and I'd do the brand new Isla probably with a bunch of nice toys on there. Uh, again, I'm not a, a, a great fan of the finish inside of what Fountain Peugeot is doing. Uh, I love their layouts. I love some of their innovations. Uh, I like some of their materials, uh, but they do leave a, a fair amount of fared plastic in the ceiling and, the, and an unfinished feeling underside of the bimini top. But overall, I'd be more comfortable in this vessel. Okay, moving on to monohull heresy. What are we going to compare this to on the monohull side? Remembering we're adding about 20% on a monohull to get the same comparable living space. So we're looking at boats in around 46, 48 feet here. First up is a 2023 Beneteau uh, 46.1, 46, 46 foot monohull. They're asking 600 grand. It's basically brand new. Uh, the uh, sea wind would be 765, so I'm paying 165 grand more. Uh, on this one, I would go with the sea wind. Um, I just, uh, I'll, I'll figure out how to do wraps and warm up the interior, but I will have a much more comfortable platform on the sea wind for uh, major passages. Uh, next up is a 2022 Hansa 460. They're looking for 769 uh, versus 765. Uh, on this one, I'm afraid I'd do the Hansa. Uh, I got a lot of space on the interior. It's a very attractive boat. The finishes are great. Um, uh, and uh, I know that, uh, yeah, I'll have to get Sylvia over the healing, but I think she'd be happier there. Finally, we're looking at a 2021 Dufour 43. It's like a, a uh, 430, sorry. It's a 46-foot boat. They're asking for 58,000, US versus 665,000. Uh, what would I do here? I, uh, for, for less than half the price, I would have to go the Dufour uh, 43 and get a 46 foot uh, yacht that's probably overall more comfortable for me. Oh, that didn't go so well. Anyways, here we are on the Dave score. So how did she do? Down, down, down. Oh, she's way down there for my applications. So looking here then, uh, we've got her at 56 out of 100. Uh, so elegance, interior, 4 out of 10. It, it's deserved. Uh, exterior, elegance, 5 out of 10. There's not a lot going on there. Comfort, uh, 5 out of 10 on the interior and a 5 out of 10 on the exterior. There's just not a lot to talk about in that helm position. The chair might be comfy, but I'm going to be getting a crick in my back and my neck just trying to see my sails. Uh, the quality, I give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, it, it's okay. It's not extraordinary. It is a vinyl ester boat, so that's good. Performance, a 7 out of 10. The numbers were okay, but uh, we had a Bali beating it. Uh, Lazy Sailor, an 8 out of 10. Uh, everything comes back to the helms, and I do like the twin helms and the ease of transfer between them. Uh, Condo, it's a 4 out of 10. It's number one, way too small, and number two, what they've done with it just doesn't make it feel like home. Uh, geek is 5 out of 10. There's nothing really geeky here. And value for money, about a 6 out of 10. With all the other things considered, I, I, I feel that's about fair. So 56 out of 100, putting it uh, in line with the uh, ORC 42 and uh, 50. Now, bearing in mind, the ORCs are down there simply because of my application. Uh, I would score the ORCs higher just because they're such a purpose. Like, it's like trying to compare a Formula One race car with an Acura legend. I like it. It no worky. I love the ORCs, and if I could have two boats, those, those would be way up there. The Neil 47... Um, Gunboat 57 for its practicality. So these are all a specialty boats really here that this is stuck. And the Sea Wind is not a specialty boat. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not a good look. Uh, so overall, that's where she is and, and probably appropriately so. Our art of the region this week is Ismail Akar, Turkish Delight Bazaar. Ismail Akar, born in 1971, is a leading Turkish painter. He graduated with honors in 1991 from the Finer Art School of Marmara University. In 1993, Akar received his Master of Arts degree in Technology and Art, as well as in Postmodernism. In 2004, Akar was awarded the Most Successful Artist of Turkey. 
His paintings have been exhibited in over 60 solo and well over 40 joint exhib exhib exhibitions as of 2006. He often applies contemporary media techniques, including computer technology, to traditional painting techniques. The artist was, has created works on themes such as history, uh, particularly that of Istanbul, and the meeting of Western ideas with Eastern spirituality. Well, that's our Waves, Wine, Art, and Ideas for one more week. Do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there's a lot to this boat that could be improved very easily with very low cost. And so I do hope that they uh, take the plastic out of it a bit and warm her up. Uh, they could do that on, on all their new boats, including the 1370. Another cool bit of news this week is we have our first two inaugural members to our pa Patreon page at Naval Gazing at Camp David. Thanks so much to those gentlemen. Do appreciate it. It's highly encouraging. Well, that's it. Have a great week. We'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>